Welcome. Today we're looking at one of the most recognisable buildings in London, Tower Bridge. And although it's iconic, there's actually plenty of hidden history if you know where to look. So today I'll be sharing some of the unusual stories and what to look out for when you next visit. My name's Katie, I'm your guide to London's hidden history. I'm a qualified Blue Badge tourist guide and I run walks and virtual tours all over the capital. But let's start with a bit of background about Tower Bridge. It was finished in 1894, a combined effort of Sir Horace Jones, John Wolfe Barry and Henry Mark Brunel. And it was a state of the art steel bridge, but it was made to look a lot older clad in stone with two huge gothic towers and this was so it blended in with its much older neighbour, the Tower of London. We know and love the bridge as painted pale red, white and blue, but this is relatively new. It was decorated to celebrate the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977. The original colour, a lovely shade of chocolate brown, something that you can still see on the banisters if you visit Tower Bridge today. I think I prefer the current colours. The major element of Tower Bridge was of course the fact that it had to open. This is because between Tower Bridge and London Bridge we have the Pool of London, an important shipping port. At its height it used to open about 4,000 times a year, today it's around 800. And if you're lucky, you can still see ships passing through today. So how does it work? Tower Bridge is actually multiple types of bridges in one, with elements of a box girder, a suspension bridge, and a bascule. Bascule comes from the French for seesaw, and this is the part that lifts. The pier pivots against a huge counterweight that's usually hidden from view but you can actually visit them. If you book on a behind the scenes tour, you can go inside the bascule chambers and they use them for concerts and film screenings too. The bridge has also opened for special occasions, but my favorite story is a less well-known one from 1952. On the 30th of December, a man called Albert Gunter was going about his normal day, a bus driver on number 78. But this time, the warning lights that usually signal that the bridge is opening didn't go off and Albert found himself on the north side of the pier as it was lifting. Like something out of a James Bond film, guys, Albert made the jump and his colleagues at the Dalston bus garage would forever call him Water Wings. For his heroic effort, Albert got £10 from London Transport and also £35 from the City of London. Speaking of the City of London, you can see their crest on Tower Bridge. Here it is on the left hand side. On the right is the bridge mark and the logo for Bridge House Estates, a company founded in 1282. Originally, they looked after the only bridge in London, London Bridge, and ironically, if you Google image search London Bridge, over half the pictures are Tower Bridge. But that's another story. Over the centuries, Bridge House Estates has built up a vast sum of money, originally from tolls across London Bridge. They paid for Tower Bridge and continue to maintain many of central London's bridges. On the subject of sneaky visual clues, it's worth paying attention to the lampposts as you walk along the north side of Tower Bridge. One of them is odd. It is not a lamppost, but a cast iron chimney. And it used to be connected to the Royal Fusiliers room underneath the bridge. Because of the Clean Air Act, which banned coal fires in 1956, it fell out of use. While we're down here, this section of Tower Bridge is known as Dead Man's Hole. Bodies would wash up in this section of the River Thames at an alarming rate, and there was a mortuary that was based inside Tower Bridge. Today, all you can see is this wooden door, but thanks to Martin Bellum, who has some fantastic pictures on Flickr, you can get a sense of what's behind. Thank you, Martin, and I've linked in the description so you can have a look at the whole album. But let's end on a high note. 
Since 1982, the upper walkways of Tower Bridge have been opened as a tourist attraction. Today there are glass panels to walk across, and you can see them if you look up from the road. And if you're up for it, walk across them yourself. These walkways were part of the original design of Tower Bridge, allowing pedestrians to walk above while below the bridge was open. They lasted until 1910, and some say they were plagued in the later years by pickpockets and prostitutes. However, a guide inside Tower Bridge told me that this wasn't true. But one amazing fact that is true is during the First World War, the Tower Bridge gun station controlled an anti-aircraft gun on top of the bridge. It even shot down a German plane on the 19th of May, 1918. The Imperial War Museum have a picture of the personnel linked in the description. Finally, for a visible military connection, look out for this at the base of the North Stairs. It's a property mark. The three lines are a broad arrow, a symbol of the Board of Ordnance, a military government department founded in the 16th century and based in the Tower of London. It later became the War Department, hence the W and D. I hope you enjoyed this video of Tower Bridge's hidden history. Thanks for watching and let me know your favourite fact in the comments below. You can sign up to get more hidden history in a weekly email that goes out every Wednesday and the link is below. If you enjoyed the video, you can subscribe here and maybe share it with someone else who loves London. But I'll be back next week with more of London's hidden history.